Good afternoon. This is your host, Michael C., welcoming you to Mercy Health's Healthcare Spotlight. Every Saturday, Mercy Health brings you important and helpful information that we hope will help you in your personal and family health care decisions. Mercy Health Muskegon offers the best of both worlds, quality local health care and access to specialists, technology, and cutting-edge treatments throughout the region. Whether you receive care at our hospital or at one of our systems locations, we are committed to helping you receive the very best health care possible. At Mercy Health, it's not either or, it's all of these and more. It's Mercy Health. Well, hello today. We welcome uh, Colleen Johnson, Director of Mercy Health's North Shore Primary Care Network, and Shannon Branham, Practice Manager of Mercy Health's Oak and Lakes Urgent Care, and Teresa Quinlan, Manager of Mercy Health Emergency. Today, Colleen, Shannon, and Teresa will help us uh, gain a better understanding of primary care, urgent care, and emergency, emergency care, the differences and what you should know about both and the role they play in your health care. Good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, well, let's start with Colleen. Let's first talk about um, primary care, if you could. Okay. Um, I represent the North Shore Primary Care Network, which is Whitehall, Shelby, Hart, and Ludington. We have family practice that are also urgent care. That The two urgent cares are in the Ludington practice and the Whitehall practice. Okay, and um, I've had the privilege of being up in Ludington the last year or so and watched that transform. It's a really beautiful facility that you've got growing up there. It is beautiful. Um, we're very lucky to be up in the Ludington area at this time, and we are the newest facility for Mercy Health Primary Care in that area. Okay, and Shannon, tell me a little bit about urgent care and how that differs from emergency care. So for urgent care, we take care of exactly that. Urgent matters when patients are not able to get into their primary care doctors. Um, Things that we can take care of at urgent care would be um, your simple back strains, bladder infections, um, bug bites or small animal bites, coughs, congestion and sinus issues, ear infections, mild fevers, minor burns, nausea and or vomiting, um, pink eye symptoms or other minor eye problems, rashes, sprains or minor injuries, and throat pain. Um, We also do some minor laceration repairs. Mm -hmm. Um, And when you say minor laceration repairs, help us out. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure as a kid that meant I was there. Um, Tell us what that is. So your basic scrapes, bruises, um, when you've got small cuts where there's not excessive bleeding, we can take care of that at the urgent care center. Okay. And then now that takes us to the next level of care. Uh, Teresa, obviously, uh, emergency care is a whole different uh, level of care uh, compared to primary and urgent. Uh, touch base with, a little, with us a little bit about what emergency care is, and then we're going to go a little bit more into that. The goal of emergency care is to take care of those issues that could be potentially life-threatening or cause permanent damage if they're not treated immediately. So your Urgent care issues need to be taken care of now, and if you can't get into your primary care, then that works well for you. But if you're having chest pain um, and could be having a heart attack, that would be something you would definitely need to visit the emergency room for. If you're having stroke symptoms with sudden weakness on one side of your body, you definitely would need to come to the emergency room. If you have a broken bone, if you're having um, difficulty breathing, certainly the emergency room would be the place for you to visit severe pain that you're unsure of why you have it, abdominal pain, Um, you suspect you have a broken bone, then you would need to come to the emergency room. Um, If you're having loss of vision, severe head pain, those are emergency room visits. Um, If you have a child that took um, your medications or you suspect a rat poisoning, that would be a great time to visit the emergency room and to not delay your visit. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and I think some people pause and try to f- figure that out. What would your suggestion to be to people who are like, well, I'm not sure. Should I go to urgent care, emergency care? Um, when in doubt, go right with the emergency? When in doubt, go to the emergency room. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, so ladies, we've kind of just quickly covered all of the basic services of these. Um, so can, can uh, you tell us maybe some of the mis- misperceptions of people of that care, and, and sometimes they end up in the wrong places. They, they have flu symptoms, and now they're in emergency. And I, I know for years there was a problem in emergency care when 
flu, people with flu symptoms were stacking up into the emergency rooms and then really filling up the emergency rooms, and that caused slowdowns for other emergency care. So tell us some of the misperceptions of where you should be and, and, and who should be where in, in care. Well, in the Whitehall area, we're 20 miles from the nearest emergency room. So a lot of times patients will come into our office thinking that it's a step, a stop for before they go to the emergency room. So what happens is they're coming in with those flu symptoms and if they need fluids or we need to give them um, some type of treatment, we can do that and then we can send them back home without stacking up people in the emergency rooms. So this past February or February we're in right now has been an awful flu season. We are seeing multiple cases weekly of um, what we call the true flu that really is influenza, not just flu-like symptoms. So they have to come in and we can do a test for that to show that it is the true influenza. And then the uh, providers will do the correct treatment for that. Well, before we get to the rest of that, let me go on to the influenza. And and there have been schools here in the West Michigan region that have been closing because of this. Tell us what what some of those true flu symptoms are and how you can tell the difference between that and, and, you know, uh, what people might perceive as flu. Uh, The biggest misconception that we have about true influenza is that people think if they have nausea and vomiting that they have the flu. True influenza is a respiratory problem, Um, so you will have difficulty breathing, a cough, a high fever, body aches. It is not typically nausea and vomiting. Those are not influenza symptoms. Okay. And are we hearing a a little bit of a spike? I I, I heard Colleen sort of say, you know, they're starting to, you know, and here we are in February, and actually, you know, today might be in the 50s. People are starting to think, well, we're past that. We're probably getting right into the into the middle of that, aren't we, of the, of the season? Yes, we are. Um, the influenza is hitting us really hard right now. The emergency rooms are very busy. There are a lot of inpatients with influenza. Um, the elderly, when they get influenza, it tends to hit them harder, and they tend to need to be hospitalized. So it has been really difficult to keep up with our emergency flow due to the, the influx of influenza patients. So what are some other things that uh, we should be helping our audience learn about these types of care that uh, we haven't already just touched on? Anybody? <laughs> Not specific to influenza, but talking about the urgent care and what's um, provided. We do have x-ray capabilities at both of our locations, at the Oak Campus and the Lakes Campus. Um, So, like I said, we can take care of minor sprains, that kind of thing. We can assess for broken bones. But if you have an obvious broken bone, that's definitely something that would have to go to the emergency room um, for treatment. The other thing that we see a lot of come in um, to the urgent care center that we're not prepared to address is suicide or attempted suicide, suspected child abuse, elderly abuse, that kind of thing. We don't have social work on site. We don't have the psych nurses available to us. So those types of things do need to go to the emergency room as well. Okay. And quick going back to the emergency room, um, because of uh, what uh, the type of care that we provide in this region, uh, do, we, you know, do we take care of trauma patients here as well? In our emergency room? We do take care of trauma patients. The Hackley campus is actually a level two trauma center. So if you come in by ambulance, you will be automatically directed to that campus. Um, That being said, trauma frequently arrives at the front door of either campus. Um, That's a whole very complicated um, aspect of care. Trauma patients are obviously ill and require a lot of resources. Um, yeah, that's not somebody really making decision. That decision is already made just by virtue of what has just taken place. Um, and we see, and I imagine the spike on that is, is heavy during the summer months, obviously, with more activity and so forth. Uh, you see a spike in emergency care, uh, particularly in the trauma. That's true. One thing about trauma is if you're involved in a trauma, it's best to call 911 rather than to just arrive at the front door of the emergency room because care can begin in the ambulance and the emergency room can be notified that you're coming and what we need to be prepared for. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. So getting to um, the emergency care at the, at the Mercy campus, um, 
now they have this beautiful facility going up, and we're going to see it uh, open in 2019, I believe it is. Um, tell me, uh, will there be some upgrades and changes to the emergency care, and, and are you excited to uh, see all of this uh, slow transformation take place? We are very excited to see all of this take place. The trauma center will move to the Mercy campus when we open in 2019. Um, the emergency center will actually be in the new tower, so we will have a whole new emergency room. It's going to be phenomenal. Um, we'll have about twice as many beds as what we have now between the two campuses. So hopefully everything will go much smoother. It will all be brand new with new equipment, and um, we will continue to offer the services we do now and have additional services available at that campus. So... Now that we've talked a little bit more about emergency care, I'd like to go back to like primary and urgent. Um, I do remember as a kid, um, you know, when we'd go to the doctor's office, that would be primary care. And I just remembered that after that, it was always to the emergency room. But I'm dating myself here because that has been kind of replaced with that, that middle care now, um, the urgent care. So, um, Shannon, maybe you could explain how that has transformed into uh, uh, urgent care today. Well, I think we work hand in hand, all three departments, primary care, um, urgent care, and emergency room work hand in hand together. It's a very close relationship. In fact, the urgent care, we are, they kind of connect us in with the primary care network offices. So primary care sees a lot of patients. They see the chronic disease stated patients. They do see urgent stuff as well. But the amount of patients that they have in each of their practices and the amount of um, appointment slots available to them oftentimes doesn't serve the, the number of patients that need to be seen. So in those cases, those patients, especially during off hours, are available to come into the urgent care center, and we can we can help with most of those needs. And uh, where are urgent care centers located? So the Oak Urgent Care Center is located at 1700 Oak Avenue, and that is the um, general campus. So it used to be the old general hospital building. Okay, yep. And then the Lakes Urgent Care Center is located at 6401 Prairie Street out in Norton Shores in the Lakes Village. Yeah, that's a beautiful facility out it there. Is. I've been out there a couple of times. Yeah, that's beautiful out there. Um, so well, let's take a b quick break here because there's a couple other things we want to talk to. But then we're going to get back to this and we're going to cover a lot of the differences between the care and so forth. And I'd like to hear a little bit more from you on, on what your thoughts are on on uh, working along with staff and colleagues and how you work together as teams to provide that care, uh, which is probably just as important as being there, is, is having that great team that, that works together. Um, but first, well, we're going to take a short break and get back to the great discussion about uh, Mercy Health's primary care, urgent care, and emergency care services. But I wanted to remind you, our, our listeners, about Mercy Health's free student heart screenings. Mercy Health High School student heart screenings are free and open to any high school student from 9th to 12th grade or the, entering the 9th grade in the fall. Each student must have a parent or guardian's consent to undergo the screening. The screenings take place at our Hackley campus in Muskegon. Heart screenings are a simple, quick method to identifying pre-existing heart conditions that could increase a student's risk of complications during physical activity and or athletic competition. Since 2012, Mercy Health has screened a total of 3,500 high school students and diagnosed four at-risk students with a serious heart condition, while also identifying over 50% of students with borderline or high blood pressure. Kind of tells you how important these are. Heart screens are, are completed in approximately 15 minutes and consist of heart history questionnaire, blood pressure check, 12-lead EKG, phys physician exam, and if necessary, an echocardiogram. So for more information on upcoming dates and registration, go to mercyhealthheartandvascular.com. Sign up now for your children's free screening. One other thing I wanted to mention to you is, and we've just talked about this a couple weeks ago on our show, is the uh, Mercy Health The Ride. Make sure that, uh, that Mercy Health Muskegon's The Ride is a part of your fitness goal uh, in health, uh, in, into a healthier 2017. Riders of all ages and fitness levels are welcome to participate. This year's event will be held on Saturday, March 11th, from noon until 4.30 at the Lakes Mall. Since its inception 12 years ago, the ride has become the Lakeshore's premier indoor cycling event. To date, 
More than 4,400 riders riding more than 50,000 miles have participated in the annual event, which has raised nearly 500000 to benefit cardiac, cardiac patients in need. Programs that benefit from, from the ride have included the development and enhancement of the Mercy Health High School Heart Screening Program, specialized equipment for patients receiving rehabilitation services at the Mercy Health Heart Center, scholarships for those in need of cardiac rehabilitation but whose financial or insurance coverage status precludes them from receiving services. This year's proceeds from the ride will support heart and vascular services at the new medical center opening in 2019. For more information or to register, go to mercyhealthmuskegon.com backslash the ride. So we're coming back here and we're going to be talking about um, the um, uh, heart, or excuse me, we're, we're, we're going to be talking about primary care, urgent care, and emergency care. And we want to go back to that and sort of recap what we've talked about and give folks an idea of what these levels of care include and then go into a little bit more on that. Colleen, again, tell us a little bit about what are the basic services provided under the primary care services umbrella? Well, for primary care in all four of our northern offices, you can see a primary care physician and or a physician assistant or a nurse practitioner. We do um, family practice from newborn to geriatric, so all through the whole life cycle. So we perform well visits. We now have um, care managers embedded in all of our practices. We also have social workers embedded in our practices and pharmacists, PharmDs that are embedded in the practices. So we're trying to be um, what I'm sure everybody's been hearing lately is we're your um, patient-centered medical home for all aspects of your life and your, ham- your family health care needs. Yeah, and when you, say, when you talk about the patient-centered care, it's really this team, instead of going around to different people in a team, the team kind of follows the, goes to the patient and follows the patient, don't they? They do. Um, we actually, in our Ludington facility, we design that to bring the care to the patient instead of the patient to the care. The only thing we need to do um, is to move a patient necessarily would be for an x-ray. You can't necessarily, in a primary care office, move the x-ray equipment to the patient. But we do have lab draws and that we bring to the patient in the room. We also have, like we said, the pharmacists that meet with our patients regularly and our social workers. That was pretty interesting. So let's touch base with uh, urgent care. Um, Shannon, tell us a little bit more about urgent care and what those primary services are under the urgent care umbrella. So urgent care, we do, we're open, let me give you our hours first. <clears throat> so for the Oak Campus, we are open seven days a week from nine o'clock in the morning until nine o'clock in the evening. We have one physician on staff during all operational hours. And then we also, for partial hours, have an additional provider available, either a nurse practitioner or a physician's assistant available. The Lakes Campus hours are Monday through Friday from 9 o'clock in the morning until 9 o'clock in the evening. And then Saturday and Sundays, we're open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, we do have a lab available at the Oak Urgent Care Center that we do utilize. At the Lakes Urgent Care Center, we do not have lab facilities within our urgent care center. However, the Lakes Village does have an outpatient lab facility. Uh, Like I said, we do have x-ray capabilities at both campuses as well. And we are able to do point of care testing for a lot of the different tests, meaning um, we can test for influenza, mono, RSV, um, urine pregnancies, urinalysis. So several of those, those types of tests we're able to do right there and get the results very quickly. That's a broad spectrum of services then. It is. In our primary care network, a lot of the offices provide those same types of services as well. Okay. So that's a little bit about primary care services and a little bit about urgent care services. Let's hear from Teresa now again on emergency care services and the types of services that that, uh, you can expect to um, be provided there. Emergency care has um, ER physicians as well as we have PAs and nurse practitioners that work under the the actual physicians. Um, All of the nursing staff are registered nurses in the emergency room. We have phlebotomy available, um, x-ray. We have CAT scan capabilities. Um, Depending on what you come in for, you could quickly be moved to surgery 
You could go to the cardiac catheterization lab. You could be admitted to the hospital. Um, one thing that I would like to bring to attention is when it's time to call an ambulance. Um, a lot of people are hesitant to call an ambulance. If you're experiencing chest pain, even if you think you can get to the hospital quicker by having someone drive you in or driving yourself in, it is more appropriate to call an ambulance because if something happens on the way to the hospital and your loved one is driving you, there is nothing that they can do to help you. If you are in the ambulance, there's treatment that can already be started before you even arrive at the hospital. The other um, common thing that we see that walks through the front door that really should call an ambulance are people that are expo experiencing stroke symptoms. So if you have sudden weakness in one side of your body, um, arm, leg, if you have difficulty speaking or you can't speak at all or your loved one seems confused, you should call an ambulance. Those, the treatment needs to start in the ambulance and the emergency room should be prepared for your arrival. Things will go much quicker. And those two things, um, heart muscle and, and brain are very important. And the quicker you get treatment, the better off your outcome will be. Right, and that is essential. Like you say, the recovery time from whatever it might be is, is I mean, lessening the damage is going to help that recovery. Um, and I, I know men, by virtue, are the ones that always are like the last ones that are going to go and call 911 or take that, you know, that uh, ambulance ride. But if, again, to your point, if you wait, not only are you denying yourself some, some care, but during that wait or that indecision or a loved one driving you, the condition can escalate. Um, and now you really have some issues because you aren't, you know, you still haven't gotten the care yet and the, the condition could escalate, right? Absolutely, it could. Um, strokes, are, strokes are a difficult thing for people to determine that they should go immediately to the emergency room. They're not in pain. People that are in pain typically go to the emergency room much sooner. When you're having a stroke, you're not in pain. So the thought is, I'll wait and see. It's 9 o'clock at night. I'm going to go to bed. I'll see how I feel in the morning. Some of the interventions that we do, you have to get to the emergency room rapidly in order for the treatment to be effective. So if you sit at home and wait to see if you're going to feel better for two hours, you are outside the window of opportunity for some of the best treatments that are available. So it's, it's important to realize that it's not foolish to call the ambulance if you can't speak, if you can't move your right arm. That is a very necessary thing to do. You know, and then under Mercy Health, you have this faith-based care that is brought to you, whether it's an urgent care setting or emergency care setting or primary care setting. And the thing that I've always been impressed by with Mercy Health is, is the um, camaraderie and the teamwork that you find when you enter care. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? Because I think that's really important for people, too, because when you walk in, it's not just a receptionist and that's it. I mean, it's, it's really, there's a team coming at, at you with care. Well, I'd like to speak to that from at least the Ludington and the Whitehall Urgent Care Center. We have what we call the PAC system, first of all, which is our viewing system for the Muskegon radiologist to read any x-rays that we do right at that time. So it's an instant feedback. So if they see something they can have the radiologist read it right there and at their station from Muskegon while we're in Ludington and or Whitehall. The other thing is we have a great relationship with the ER uh, physicians. So our providers pick up the phone. They have something going on. They call them immediately and say, we're shipping this person. Get ready for them. And they're ready as soon as they walk in the door. Um, what we do normally, too, is we do call the ambulance for people. So people uh, um, present, again, thinking that, you know, I'm going to an urgent care center and we identify right away, you really need to be in an emergency room. So we call the ambulance, but we stabilize them until the ambulance is there to take them to the emergency room. We also have an electronic health record with all of the other primary care practices that belong to Mercy Health. And at that point, we can bring up the patient's record right there as they walk in the door. We can see their allergies that they have. We've seen their histories that they have. So we know a lot about them. So we immediately call that record up. 
we see what we need to know. And then we also, that record of our visit in the urgent care goes back to their primary care doctor immediately. Great, good. Go ahead. In the urgent care center, and I do believe, um, Michelle, you can talk to this too, the palm scanning availability for the registration piece. Yep. So we have palm scanning available for patients' registration. It scans their palms, and we really encourage patients to sign up for that. And just we give them some information around that. So if they go to someplace else, they can just place their hand in this palm scanning device, and it will bring up all of their information immediately. If they're found unconscious, same thing. They can scan their palm, and they'll be able to bring up that information immediately and know who they are. Yeah, that's good. That's important. And the palm scanning program has been growing the past six months to uh, almost a year now, so that's that's good. Let me ask each of you, um, uh, first, uh, thanks so much for the, the contributions today, but let's start with Teresa. What do you find most satisfying about working in the emergency department? It's great to be able to take people that are at a very scary point in their life and be able to to help them or to let them know that what they have truly might not be life-threatening, but it's still okay to come in. Um, that being said, the triage nurse that sees you first, you may have to wait to be seen. Um, you've been evaluated now by someone that has special treatment, special um, training to identify life-threatening emergencies. Um, so not everyone is seen in the order that they arrive in the emergency room. You are seen in the order that you are the sickest. And that's difficult for people to understand because it's a bad, it's, it's a bad time for them and they, they feel horrible. And it's very, it's rewarding to work with people and be able to turn them around. Yeah. And how about you, Shannon? What, uh, what do you find most satisfying at working in the urgent care environment? I think the variety that comes in and the people that you see, and they, we see people from all walks of life and, and all different sorts of um, issues coming in. And to be able to help them, there's a lot of education that goes out. Our staff is friendly and welcoming, and um, I just enjoy the urgent care. And I, and I really enjoy working with the employees that I have at both campuses. They are very, very competent and kind and compassionate to the patients, and the patients really um, receive that very well. And Colleen, share with us uh, your thoughts. Well, I've been in this for quite a few years, and I've been through a lot with the primary care and then moving towards urgent care. And I do think that it is so complimentary. I think that having, like you said, that team is what's been very, very exciting. We used to be a standalone. It was just physicians or nurse practitioners or physician assistants. Now we have everyone involved. So again, building the actual patient-centered medical home aspect has been really rewarding for us. Okay, let's go quickly to Shannon one last time. Tell us urgent care. What, who should be? Who should visit the urgent care? And what you know? Quickly tell us who those folks were. All right, be. quickly. Urgent care can take care of back strains, bladder infections, bug bites, or small animal bites, coughs, congestions, sinus problems ear infections, mild fevers, minor burns, nausea and or vomiting, pink eye or and other minor eye problems, rashes, sprains, minor injuries, or throat pain. And then, Teresa, other than that, they should probably go to the emergency, correct? They should. They should come to the emergency if there's attempted suicide, an overdose, broken bones, if you're having chest pain, Small children under three months of age that are having difficulty breathing and a fever. If you've lost consciousness, have severe burns. If you have poisoning or difficulty breathing, you should definitely come to the emergency room. So there's anything else anybody would like to add before we go today? I, I just appreciate you taking the time to have us all come in and um, give the information to the community. And can I just give you the two addresses sure. for our urgent care in Whitehall is 905 East Colby and in Ludington, it is 5656 West US 10. All right. We want to thank our guests today, Colleen Johnson, Shannon Branham, Teresa Quinlan from Mercy Health. Today's broadcast has been brought to you by Mercy Health Muskegon. Please join us next week when we discuss another health care spotlight issue. At Mercy Health, it's not either or, it's all of these and more. It's Mercy Health.